In today's lesson, we will talk about simultaneous equations, okay? And then we will deal with when one is a linear and the other one is a nonlinear. So when we talk about a linear function, it is of the form y is equal to ax plus b, okay? Where the highest power of this x term is, is 1, okay? So it could be y is equal to 2x plus 1 or y is equal to 10x minus 2, okay? You could see that the highest power of the x is 1. But when we are talking about nonlinear, okay, nonlinear, it means that the highest power of the x could be more than 1. So, for example, we could have um, 2x squared plus 3x plus 4, right? We could also have y squared is equal to x squared plus 1, all right? So, the point is that the highest power of the x is more than 1. You could even have a cubic, a cubic um, function like um, what we are stating, okay? So, that's it. So, as long as the highest power of the x term is more than 1, we are talking about a nonlinear. So, that is what we will be doing today. Okay, so now let's start with this first question. We have y is equal to x squared and then y is equal to x plus um, 6. Now, since y is repeating, it is easier for us to just equate the equations and go away. So we can start with x squared is equal to x plus 6. Right. So, um, sorry, we can move everything to one side. All right. And then... When we do, we can factorize this easily. All right. So we can put x here and then x there. Then what are the two factors of negative 6 that when we add, we will get um, negative 1? And that is um, negative 3 and then 2. Okay. So minus 3 plus 2. All right, so that means that we have x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 3 or x equals negative 2. So this is the case for x. So now we need to look for the y values. So when x equals 3, what shall we get for y? So we can put this x equals 3 into any of these and it will be fine. Well, I prefer the first one. I'll just square it and I'm good to go. So 3 squared and that is 9, which means um, I have this pair, x equals 3 and then y equals 9. Okay, how about when x equals negative 2? y will be equal to negative 2 squared and that will give me 4 so I have another pair x equals negative 2 y equals 4 okay let's look at another question so in this case y is not equal to um, another y okay it's different so what we do is that we do substitution so whatever you see y you input the definition of y into the second equation. So this will give us s squared plus xy, right? But this is y. So we have x minus 6 is equal to 8. So we can expand this bracket. We can expand it. So we will get x squared plus x squared minus 6x equals 8. Good. So we can add these two x squared. And then we have minus 6x minus 8 equals 0. Right, so 2 is common to all. So we can strike through by 2. And then this is what we get. So this, simultaneous, this is a, a quadratic that we can easily factorize. Okay, there are several methods 
you can either use the um, difference, uh, what's, what's it called again? Completing the square using a quadratic formula or the factorization. Any will be fine. Okay. So you have x here, you have x there. All right. So this is negative 4. Factors of negative 4 that when you add, you get negative 3 will be negative 4 and then 1. Right. So we have x minus 4 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. x equals 4 or x equals negative 1. Well, we need to find the y value. So when x equals 4, what are we going to use? I think we should use this first one, okay? Because we have a definition that says that y, y is equal to x minus 6. Okay, so I think that's relatively easier. So y will be equal to x, which is 4 minus 6, and that will give us negative 2. Which means that when x, come back, okay, which means that when x equals 4, we have y equals negative 2, right? How about when x equals negative 1? y will be equal to negative 1 minus 6, and that gives us negative 7. So when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 7. All right, let's look at another one. This is a bit complicated, but it is not actually. Why? Because let's call this equation 1, call this equation 2. All right, so from equation 1, we can rearrange, say that x should be equal to 1 plus to y, so that we will put the definition of x into equation 2. So wherever we will see x, we will put x plus 2y. And that would mean that we have 4y squared minus 3, okay? But what is x? x is 1 plus 2y squared equals 1. Then we can expand that bracket, all right? So we have 4y squared minus 3. Into, we will have 1 plus 4y plus 4y squared equals 1. Right, so we can now expand the bracket and be free with it. Now we have negative 3, negative 12y, negative 12y squared equals 1. So this negative 12y squared and then this 4y squared, yeah, we can work with them. So that will give us negative 8y squared. Then we have negative 12y minus 3 equals 1. Should we move everything on the left-hand side to the right-hand, then we are going to get 8y squared plus 12y plus 1 plus 3 equals 0. So this will give us 8y squared plus 12y plus 4 equals 0. Now, 4 is common, you know, to both. So we can divide through by 4, and that will give us 2y squared plus 3y plus 1 equals 0. When you factorize this, you should get 2y um, plus 1, and then y plus 1, okay? Let me show that I've made the right thing. So this will, this and that will give us 2y squared. That will be 2y. That is y making 3. And then, of course, yeah, we are good to go. Okay, so it means that 2y plus 1 equals 0 or y plus 1 equals 0, which means y is equal to negative half or y equals negative 1. Now, we need to use any of them but i think since we have redefined our x this way that x should be equal to one plus two y i think we can use it okay so let's cut this and then so that it can help us here okay so we, we this is the definition of 
x right so when um let me use black so when y equals negative half x will give us what that's one plus two into negative half and that would be one plus sorry that wouldn't be plus it'd be minus okay because this two take care of that negative one zero so this means that when you have your y is equal to negative half your x will be zero how about when your y is negative one so when y equals negative one x will be equal to 1 plus 2 into bracket negative 1 and that will be 1 minus 2 giving you negative 1. This means that x y equals negative 1 produces x equals negative 1 as well. So you are done. Okay. This is what you were looking for. Now this is the last question I want us to look at. This is a bit different. Because you have x, y, okay? And there is no x, y here. So how do we proceed? Maybe you might want to start by expanding this bracket, okay? Let's do that and see if we can get something. So let's call this equation 1. Call this equation 2. So from equation 2, what can we say? We have, this is what we have from equation 2, okay? Well, so x times y, that will give us x, y. x times 2, that will give us plus 2x. y times negative 1 minus y. Then um, negative 1 times 2, that's negative 2, cos 15. Right. So we can just um, work our way around this. We have x, y plus 2y. I'm sorry, that's 2x, right? Yeah. 2x minus y minus 2 minus 15 equals 0. I would just want to put everything on one side. So this gives me x, y plus 2x minus y minus 17 equals 0. This is good. So now from equation 1, I know that x, y produces 12. So I have this place becomes 12 so i have 12 okay then i have x 2x minus y minus 17 equals zero all right so now what can i do i have 2x minus y now negative 17 and 12 that'll give us negative 5 equals zero all right so now this has simplified to um, a linear, okay? This is a simple line. However, we can do something else. This same thing, we can make y the subject if we want, or we can make x the subject, it doesn't matter. So let's say we want to make y the subject. That would mean that we have 2x minus 5 equals y. Call this equation 3. So now you can put equation 3 into equation 2 or into equation 1, whichever one you want. And I think it will be easier with equation 1. All right. So what is equation 1? Equation 1 says that x, y should give us 12. So now we know the definition of y. This is it. So x into 2x minus 5 equals 12. This will give us 2x squared minus 5x equals 12. So 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 equals 0. Well, there's no common number for us to use. So we just factorize it. And then when you solve this quadratic, you should get x equals 4 or x equals negative 3 on 2. Okay. So this is what we have. This means that we can easily find the, the y. We know that, that we have a definition for the equation 3. y is equal to 2x minus 5. So when x equals 4, y will be equal to 2 into 4 
minus 5, and that is 8 minus 5 giving us 3. Therefore, when x equals 4, y gives us 3. Right. So now, how about when x equals negative 3 on 2? What will y be? Well, we have 2 into negative 3 on 2 minus 5. So that, this 2 will take care of that. So we have negative 3 minus 5 giving us negative 8. Therefore, when x equals negative 3 on 2, y is negative 8. So that is the plan. You always want to, to manipulate, okay? So you, you, whether you start from the first equation or you start from the second equation, it doesn't matter, okay? Just know that you are solving them simultaneously, so you do it together. You touch one, you input into the next equation, you get the third equation. Now, with this third equation, you can input into either the first one or the second one. But, word of caution, always put into the simplest one so that you don't waste time, okay? So, equation one seems simple. That is why we input that into the equation one. And then we got our x, we got the second x. Then we look for when x is 4, y gives us 3. Now, when x is negative 3 on 2, y gives us negative 8.